Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. A couple days ago I put a video out about all of the gear that I used on my Appalachian Trail through hike, but today I wanted to make a separate video talking about all of the clothes that I used on the trail. So when I was starting my through hike, I had a, some trouble finding videos talking specifically about just the clothes. So I'm hoping that this video can help somebody out. I'm going to be talking about everything, including headwear, undergarments, um, what I wore in the different seasons that I hiked, shoes, socks, rain gear, all of that stuff. So let's jump right into it. So we're going to start from the top and move to the bottom. So we will start with headwear. So this is the hat that I used on the entire Appalachian Trail. I would definitely recommend getting a hat. The first week that I was on trail, I didn't have a hat. And when it rained, it was really annoying because rain would get in my eyes and with contacts that just doesn't work. So I would wear this hat when it was raining. I would wear it in the sunny open sections. It's true the Appalachian Trail is the green tunnel and you're mostly in the trees, but there are sections where you are exposed. The hat does really help with the sun. I got this hat on Etsy. It's a Grateful Dead hat. Um, if you don't know what the wolf stands for, you can look up Dire Wolf. In the colder winter months, I did keep beanies on hand. I wore basically just this Carhartt. I also got this really cool beanie. Uh, this is the brand, if you can see it. Uh, I got this in New Hampshire. I saw somebody on Mount Musilock wear this, so that was something fun that I picked up. Speaking of cold weather, I also used this fleece buff that I would wear right here, and this was really nice because it did keep me so warm because even if you wear like a puffy or your mid layer, your neck is mostly exposed. And so this kept my neck warm. I would wear it to sleep. I would sometimes pull it over my hair and use it as a headband. So I really liked having this. And actually, shout out to Toasty because he initially bought them this for himself, but let me wear it one day when I was cold and I just kind of never gave it back. In warm weather, or just in any weather on the trail, I always had some headband buffs. These are the two that I carried pretty much the entire trail. And I love these buffs because they are very multi-dimensional. You could use them to put your hair up. I have a lot of hair, so when it was hot outside, I would just put my hair up in these. I also used them as little crop tops sometimes when it was hot. Um, so I always kept a couple buffs on hand. And there was also a few times where my sports bra got wet and I didn't want to wear it, so I would just use one of these as a bra. As far as sunglasses go, I did carry sunglasses for some of the trail. Again, you're in the green tunnel a lot, but sometimes if you're walking in those open areas, it can get really bright and the sunglasses were good to have, but uh, I think I just kept breaking them, so <laughs> I didn't really have sunglasses the entire time I was on trail. Moving on down, we will start talking about t-shirts. So if you watched any of my through hike, you probably saw me in this t-shirt. It's just an Under Armour V-neck synthetic t-shirt. It says heat gear here. So it was designed to wick away sweat and keep you cool in the hot summer months. So synthetic shirts are a good way to go on trail. Some pros, they're cheaper. Um, they dry very quickly and they hold up pretty well. I mean, this t-shirt looks pretty good for going the entire trail with me. The cons to the synthetic t-shirts are they do hold in smells. So this is clean and it smells kind of clean, but as soon as I start sweating in this thing, the trail funk is going to come out of it. It is just ingrained in this fabric forever. Um, so that is kind of the downside with getting a synthetic shirt. The other shirt I wore about halfway through, I, um, Ibex, IBX, wool, they sent me this t-shirt and this is a Moreno wool t-shirt and I got this in right before the Shenandoahs, I believe. And this was a game changer. I would use it kind of as my sleepwear, but it eventually transitioned to my everyday t-shirt just because the Moreno wool is great for wicking away sweat. It helps regulate your body temperature and it also doesn't smell like the synthetics. And so the price difference between the synthetic shirt, which I paid probably 15 to 20 bucks for, this shirt retails for about 50 bucks. So 
in this case, it's another thing you get what you pay for. For me personally, spending $50 on a t-shirt is a punch in the gut. However, when you're doing a through hike and you're going to be wearing the same t-shirt for six months, you can justify that it might be worth your money. I think I'm going to go with the Moreno wool for my next through hike. Okay, so for colder weather, I started April 10th and I got off trail for three weeks because of my surgery. But then I got back on May 7th and it was still spring. So it was still getting cold at night. And I carried this, this smart wool. This is another Moreno wool long sleeve base layer shirt. And again, I, I paid a pretty penny for this thing. I think it was around $60, but I loved this shirt. It kept me cool when I needed it to. It kept me warm when I needed it to. Again, the Merino wool does a good job of helping to regulate your body temperature. And I would mostly use this as a sleep shirt. However, I did hike in it a few times. It felt really good against my skin. And again, it held up really well. I'm definitely taking this on the PCT with me. So I highly recommend the Smart Wool Moreno Wool Long Sleeve for sleep shirt or just a base layer when it's cold outside. The other base layer that I used, so I went back and did those 200 miles in the Smokies and it was pretty cold. So I didn't take a t-shirt out with me a couple of the times because I knew it was going to be cold. And so I took the Moreno Wool Long Sleeve Smart Wool shirt and also this synthetic Columbia shirt. And so this is kind of the cheaper option if you want a long sleeve base layer. This I got this at a thrift shop and again, it's good at wicking away your sweat. It does hold on to smells a little bit more, but it did its job in keeping me warm and cool and uh, it was also pretty comfortable. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about one of my, probably my favorite piece of gear on the entire Appalachian Trail. Before going on my hike, I realized I needed a good mid-layer and I was trying forever to get the Mellies. And at the time they were doing like a lottery because of the pandemic and I just never got picked. And so I was scrambling. I was like, what do I get? And I put an Instagram poll up and a couple people recommended Appalachian Gear Company alpaca hoodie and so that is what I ended up getting they are sometimes hard to get if you've been looking at these they're sold out a lot so I was really lucky to snag one of the last ones they had and it was a size extra large and I was like I don't care I'm gonna grab it I like my clothes big anyway and I I lo actually loved getting the extra large because it this thing was so comfy. Sometimes I would use it as a town dress if I was doing laundry and it just kept me so warm. Alpaca wool is amazing. It again does not hold on to smells and sweat. It helps regulate your body temperature. It dries very fast and it sounds gross, but I only washed this three times on trail because it just did not smell. I'm sure it was dirty and disgusting, but it didn't smell. And I just, I love this thing. I'm taking this on the PCT with me and it held up pretty well. I do have a few little pinholes here and there, but uh, yeah, I highly, highly recommend this for a mid layer if you are looking for one in the market for one. Again, it is a little bit pricey. One of these runs for around $150 or more with tax, but I wore this thing every day almost for six months, so it was definitely worth it. Hello, Fifi. For my puffy jacket, I had this Patagonia puffy. It was pretty warm. I did like this jacket. And again, it held up very well on the Appalachian Trail. Really no complaints here. I got this on sale at REI. And I think I'll probably take this on the PCT with me. I like that it has a hood. If I were ever to get another puffy, I would make sure that I got one with a hood. And so it packs down into this small little square into this pocket and it fit really nicely in my pack. And I kept my puffy with me the entire trail. I didn't send it home for summer because it could double as like a pillow or there are still nights in the summers if you're at a higher elevation that it got cold and so was happy to have this just in case.
Also, I forgot to mention about this puppy. It is synthetic fill. I didn't want to get the down fill because I didn't want to worry about it getting wet. Sometimes down is hard to dry and care for. So the synthetic did a good job of keeping me warm. Next, I'll talk about the shorts that I wore on trail. I wore shorts the majority of the trail. Up until like the end, I did get my leggings sent because it was cold. Sweetheart, please. For the most part, I did wear shorts even when it was cold. I would just layer up on top. And these are my Under Armour good old trusties that I wore the entire trail. They're just plain old Under Armour shorts. I got them at Sam's. I liked these though because they have pockets. You're gonna want pockets. They're very helpful when you go into town because you have somewhere to stow your wallet and your phone. These shorts also had the built-in underwear. And because I only brought one pair of underwear on the trail, I thought I would really like that. And I did in some circumstances. However, when it got really hot, one time I just wore the shorts. I didn't wear underwear. I just used the underwear that were in the shorts. And I chafed really, really bad. And that was the last time I did that. <laughs> so um, just be wary of that. I also picked up a second pair of shorts in front royal at the outfitter i really just saw these and thought they were super cool but i'm really glad that i did because again i was chafing with the the under armor underwear shorts in the summer so mostly in the summer i wore these they don't have the underwear in them they still got the pockets like this nice mesh and these dried so quickly so i really liked these shorts for the summer in the spring at the beginning of my through hike and towards the end in the fall i did have a pair of leggings sent to me and i would wear those at night or while i was hiking if it was really cold so the main hiking leggings that i had were these under armor leggings there's a big rip in them uh, but I really like these. These are made for colder weather. They've got like a, a warmer fleece type uh, material in the pant. So these were really nice. I will probably take these on the PCT with me if they hopefully hold up a little bit longer. But they're pretty lightweight and I um, really enjoyed wearing these when it was colder out. So for night pants and sleepwear, I use these... Magellan Outdoor Fleece Lined Leggings. I just got these at Sports Academy. They were pretty cheap. They're not like the super lightest weight, but these were so warm to sleep in and I was really happy to have them at night when it was cold out. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned is you should always have some clothes that are designated just to sleep in. I'll talk about socks later. You should have a designated sleep pair of socks too, but it's just a good thing to have to know that you're going to have warm, dry clothes at the end of the night if it's raining or if you get super sweaty or whatever. So when I went back to trail to finish the section that I had missed from surgery, it was November in the Smokies. So I was worried about being cold and there was snow and stuff like that when we were out there and it got down to the 20s. So I ordered these down pants on Amazon and I packed these out when I went on that section and they were amazing. They kept me so warm, they blocked the wind and they're just great pants and they're pretty cheap. I know Mountain Hardware makes some, they're like $250. I think I got these for $50, so super good price. And I also got the down booties and these were super warm. I'll probably take these on the PCT with me to keep your feet super nice and toasty. And so, yeah, these, these are a great purchase. Also, these were only like $30 as well. Another thing I wore when it got cold were these North Face gloves. They're kind of like a mid-weight glove. There's a texture here and there's like a fleece lined on the inside. And these worked okay. It kind of sucked when they got wet because they didn't dry very fast. I might do something different for gloves next time, but this is what I carried. I know a lot of people enjoyed glove liner and then a waterproof mitten to go over that. All right, next I'm gonna talk about undergarments. For underwear, I started out with these ex officio underwear and I didn't really like them. I, didn't, I don't like this material. It is 
breathable and it does dry fast, but I just wasn't a fan. And so when I came back to the trail after surgery, I switched over to some smart wool, merino wool underwear. And those underwear were great. I really liked those. They're actually not the underwear that I have right here. These are the icebreaker wool underwear. And funny story about that, in Front Royal, a bunch of us hikers went to base camp at, at an outfitter. I can't remember the name of it, but it was really cool. It had a brewery attached to it. I had the best IPA on trail there. Anyway, me and this girl named Lightbright accidentally swapped underwear. I left town wearing her underwear and she had mine. And I remember hiking that day and I was like, why did these underwear feel so weird? And then I looked down, I was like, these aren't mine. And we figured out we uh, accidentally swapped underwear. So Light Bright, if you're out there, I hope you're still enjoying your underwear. I still have yours and wear it all the time. For a sports bra, I just used this Nike bra. I liked it because it dried really fast and there's, you can see here, it's just this clear like mesh stuff. Held the girls in place. It was good coverage and it also was good support. So I think I'm also gonna be taking this on my PCT through hike with me. All right, loner clothes. So uh, some through hikers do carry a outfit for town when you go into town to do your laundry. If you go to hostels, a lot of times they will have loaner clothes for you, but if you stay at hotels or if you're just running into a public shower real quick, there's probably not gonna be loaner clothes. And so I carried these Nike Pro spandex and I'd also wear these hiking sometimes too, but I would mostly just use them for like loaner clothes or an extra pair of underwear when mine got too gross. And I also used this little tank top here. This was a tank top from Walmart. It was at $2 and I cut it in half and it was like a little crop top that I wore. And uh, that was what I wore whenever I did my laundry. Next, I'm gonna talk about socks. So I hate feet and I'm very particular about my socks and textures and all of that stuff. So I'm kind of a picky person when it comes to socks. But I will say the best sock on the planet is Darn Tough. I love these socks. I wore them pretty much the entire through hike. Went through quite a bit of pairs. I accidentally burned a pair in Southern Maine or New Hampshire or somewhere because I was drying them by the campfire and they accidentally fell in. The one thing I do like about Darn Tough is there's a lifetime warranty. So if you get holes in these, you can take them to an outfitter and see if they do the darn tough exchange. I actually did mine in Boiling Springs, Pennsylvania, and I think those are the socks I accidentally burned in the campfire. And I didn't ask darn tough for a new pair of socks after that, because that was my fault. And then I had a pair of darn tough socks that I only wore to sleep. I would never wear these hiking. They were specifically for sleeping. Other socks I used on the trail, a lot of y'all probably remember me wearing the tall black socks. So these were actually in Gingy liner socks. I liked these for summer because it was a really light sock. Um, and I felt like the long sock gave me a barrier to poison ivy and plants and stuff like that. The only thing I didn't really like about these socks because they were just liner socks, I would just wear, I wouldn't wear any other socks, just the liner socks. They wore down with holes pretty fast just because these are meant to be worn underneath another sock. So eventually I replaced the Njinji tall black socks with these Sockwell compression socks. And I really liked these. Um, they did have the compression and I think it helped with blood circulation to my feet that were hurting really bad at the end of the trail. So I did like these socks as well. When it got really cold and I did that smoky section, I took these wool socks. They're a little bit thicker and uh, these kept my feet warm at, in those colder temperatures. But I think the darn tufts could do just as well. So I did want to clarify, I didn't carry all those socks at once. I would normally carry one pair of darn tufts to hike in, one pair of darn tufts to sleep in, and then I either had the tall and gingy socks or the tall Sockwell compression socks. So normally three pairs of socks um, I carried with me. 
And I would recommend carrying an extra pair of hiking socks. I know some people just have one pair, but you're gonna encounter rain on the Appalachian Trail and it is really sucky to put on wet socks every day. <laughs> and it's not good for your feet either. You can start getting trench foot or blisters. So it's good to have a dry pair of socks to wear when the other pair is wet. Next, I'm going to talk about shoes. And this is a lengthy, very important topic. Shoes are arguably the most important piece of gear that you will get. And sometimes it can be a struggle. For me, I went through a couple of different shoes before I found the right ones. Even, even with hiking a lot at home, once you get on the trail and you hit that terrain in Georgia, you're going to know within the first 50 miles if your shoes are going to work for you or if you're going to have to get new ones. So most people make it to Franklin, North Carolina and go to Outdoor 76. I highly recommend those guys. They are great. They cater to through hikers and a lot of through hikers get new shoes at Outdoor 76 and these guys know what they're doing. They care. But my advice to you would get some shoes at least a year before your through hike and hike a lot in them and hike on different terrains, rocky, steep, going uphill, going downhill. That's a huge one. And make sure that your shoes work because it can save you a lot of time, money, and pain once you get on the trail. All right, so I started the trail with these Ultra Lone Peak fours, I believe. And they're the, the high top version. And I had had a pair of ultras before. I had the temp like 1.5s and they worked fine. I put like 400 miles on those things. I used them backpacking, never had any problems, but wow. After 50 miles on the trail, these killed my feet and namely my Achilles tendon. So when I went home for my surgery, I actually went to the podiatrist while I was home because my Achilles was hurting so bad. I thought I had done damage to it, but the podiatrist told me that with my anatomy, my ankle and foot anatomy, the zero drop in the ultras, which is what they're kind of famous for, just did not work for me. And it doesn't work for everybody. So just be warned that these are a very popular shoe that a lot of people recommend. But make sure you put some miles in before you use them because I know so many people on trail who started with ultras and it did, they didn't work for their feet either. So I really wanted to love these shoes and I even went on a few hikes before the Appalachian Trail with them and didn't have any problems. But unfortunately they just didn't work for me and I had to send them home and try a new shoe. The next shoe I tried were some Adidas Trail Runners. I don't have them, I threw them away, and unfortunately I couldn't find the shoe again once I needed a new pair. So that's another thing to pay attention to. Make sure the shoe that you start out with is something that is continuously in stock. The, the Adidas Trail Runner that I was wearing was kind of like a limited edition thing, and I guess I didn't really like look into it very good when I started the trail, but basically they were sold out by the time I needed a new pair, and then I was scrambling to find another shoe that was gonna work for my foot. But I did like the Adidas. They were Adidas Terex, Terex or something like that. I'll put a picture right here. Good shoe, kind of expensive, but it did have the six millimeter lift on the heel. And as soon as I sh started wearing those shoes, my Achilles tendon pain went away. And that's when I knew like, I just cannot do the zero drop shoes. So I also liked these Adidas shoes because they were like the high top, so they provided a little bit of ankle support as well. So I needed a new pair of shoes at Harper's Ferry, and that was the last time I wore the Adidas Trail Runners. And I went to an outfitter there and was like, I need new shoes, I have no idea, I want Trail Runners, that's all I know. I can't do zero drop, that's all I know. And so they actually put me in some North Face Vectives. And I actually love these shoes. They're what I wore for the rest of the trail. I went through three pairs. I would say the only downside of these shoes is they don't last very long. I could make them stretch four to 500 miles, but that was 500 miles was really pushing it. And the tread just kind of wears away. And um, 
I started getting holes like in the bottom of my foot right here. But other than that, these shoes are really comfortable. So I did try some other pairs of shoes on trail after I summited Katahdin and I was gonna go back to do that 200 mile section. I went online and I found they have North Face Vectives in high tops. So I bought these boots thinking that, oh, this is gonna be the perfect shoe. However, for some reason, with the high top ankle support, the shoe fit differently. And I actually got these shoes, uh, this is leather. And this you can see is like a mesh. And so this shoe actually fits smaller on my foot and I found that out within the first like 30 miles of trail when I started that 200 mile section that these shoes were too small. When I would go downhill, my foot was, my toes were hitting the top. It was very painful. Um, but the thing is I can still wear these shoes on flat ground in everyday life and I don't have a problem. And so that's why I say like, even if a shoe works for you, like an everyday normal day life, doesn't mean it's gonna work for you on the Appalachian Trail because there are so many ups and downs on the trail. Uh, you have to take that into consideration when buying shoes. So another pair of shoes that I tried on the trail, this was before the whites. And again, around the time I was rolling my ankles really bad, I said, well, what if I tried like a Merrill boot? And so at La Hoots in New Hampshire, I got these Merrill Moabs. And I really like these shoes, but I'm just not a boot person. I like the cushion of trail runners and how they're just so light and they just feel like tennis shoes. The boots are a little heavier and the sole is a little bit harder. And so I found that my feet after like 10 miles were just screaming at me in these shoes. And I've put over a hundred miles in these things. I actually wore them through like a 50 mile section on my 200 miles throughout the Smokies. And they just, they just always hurt my feet and I'm just way more comfortable in the trail runners. And so again, these shoes are good for day hikes or maybe smaller backpacking trips at home. But on the Appalachian Trail, I'm team trail runner. Again, shoes are completely personal preference. These are the shoes that worked and didn't work for me. It could be completely different with you. Everybody's anatomy and foot is different. And so again, make sure you go to a good outfitter or shoe store that can help you get into a shoe that's going to work for you. I also carry camp shoes. So these are my Tevas. And I really like these as camp shoes. They were easy to slide in. They weigh basically nothing and they were good to wear in town as well. Another popular option for camp shoes are Crocs. I almost brought my Crocs on the trail, but I went with the Tevas just because they packed down a little bit smaller, but Crocs are a good option as well. And pro tip, if you do go for Crocs, get the Walmart Crocs because they're A, cheaper, and they also weigh less than regular Crocs. Okay, rain gear. I am team frog togs, and I love frog togs. That's what I wore the entire trail. This little set, uh, you get this jacket and pants at Walmart. It's like 15 bucks, and while they're not the most durable, I only went through, I think, two different jackets and if I ever ripped or anything, I would just use duct tape to cover the rip. In the summer, I did go with a Frog Togs poncho. It was a lot more airy, it kept me more cool, and I would throw it over my backpack to keep it dry as well. And that worked really well in the warm summer heat. I do prefer the jacket for the colder months. And this also worked really well as a windbreaker, especially in the whites when you're up on top of those big mountains. Throw your rain jacket on over your puffy and you stay super, super warm. As far as rain pants go, I didn't really use rain pants on the Appalachian Trail. I ended up always sending those home. And I tried some Magellan, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, that brand from Academy for the last 200 miles. I just, I don't know. I just don't like rain pants. Maybe I need to like buy some better quality ones, but 
they just, they're just not really for me. I also forgot to show you, this is my dry bag that I used for all of my clothes on trail. It is waterproof. It's a seed to summit bag and it's like a roll top like this and it, it worked well for me. All right guys, that's gonna do it for today's clothing gear video. I hope this helps you planning your future through hike, a future backpacking trip, or a future day hike. Just get outside, that's what matters. If you like this video, make sure that you comment, like, subscribe, whatever, blah, 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 all the things. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.